In this video, I'm going to show you how Herbie Hancock in a short two chorus solo manages to use pretty much every concept in the book when it comes to approaching a chord progression from a modal or modern jazz point of view. So you're gonna see some examples of how he's using triplets, how he's shifting motifs in and out of the key, how he's superimposing altered dominance and using some atonal or at least very chromatic ideas, melodic ideas, and of course also just changing the chords in general. There's really a lot of stuff going on. My name is Jens Larsen. If you wanna learn jazz and make music, then subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Antiano Kirby Henke. The solo that I'm talking about in this video is off the Wayne Shorter album, Speak No Evil, which is of course anyway really a classic album. And if you want to check out some great playing from Herbie Hancock, then I think this is really one of the places you want to go. Actually this period, this album was, as far as I remember, recorded in 64 and released in 66. Actually recorded the same year as one of my favorite Miles albums, which is also with Herbie Hancock, which is the Four and More and My Funny Valentine concert. And if you want to hear a similar approach to what is happening here on the Wayne Shorter pieces, but then on standards, then those are probably the albums you want to check out. This example is the opening of the solo. Herbie Hancock doesn't start playing immediately. He leaves a few bars for Freddie Hubbard just to end his solo, and then he starts playing. The first six bars of the solo is all C minor, and what Herbie Hancock is doing here is really shifting one fragment, one motif, in and out of the key, and using some rhythmic displacement, and also some uh, triplet grouping ideas. The motif that he's using is this simple sus2 or sus4 triad, so G, C, and D, and you can of course see that as being a G sus4 or a C sus2, uh, or maybe even a chordal arpeggio. That sound of the chordal arpeggio and the sus triad is something that's really, really flowing through the entire album. Uh, if you take the theme of Witch Hunt, then that's also a chordal arpeggio. So this, and also Speak No Evil, the title track of the album is really based on a C sus4 triad. The first phrase is just that triad played as triplets. Then in the next bar, he plays the same idea, but moved down to D from G and we get, now it's played on the two. And then in the next bar, we get it back in the original, but then with an upbeat and played on the third beat of the bar. And then moving it up a minor third. And now he starts shifting it. So he's taking this sus2 or sus4 triad and then moving it around in minor thirds and then playing that in triplets. So we get... And then actually ending up on the D flat on the E flat 7. So the way Herbie Hancock is playing this is first just playing it completely inside the C minor sound and then moving it around inside the sound and then he starts shifting it around in minor thirds. And there is a lot of stuff going on in this solo where he's shifting things around in a certain interval and then in that way moving in and out of the key. And this is the first example already within the first eight bars. The core progression of Wayne Shorter's Witch Hunt is essentially just a take on a minor blues. So what is happening here is that he's taking a 12 bar minor blues, then he's made the form twice as long. So instead of having 12 bars, it's 24, which essentially just means that everything is two bars long instead of one. And then he's changed a few chords. So we get still the C minor, that's the tonic. Instead of the fourth degree, it goes to E flat seven, so we don't get an F minor. And then he goes back to C minor. And then the final part of it is really just a free take on a progression that's really there just to take us back to C minor. In that respect, it's actually not that far away from the same way that Footprints is composed. A big part of what was happening around Herbie Hancock and also Wayne Shorter in this period was that they were trying to make songs and chord progressions more modal. That's also why with the Miles Davis Quintet, they actually slow things down and then play them in double time so that you can't really hear how a 251 is moving as a 251. You just hear this really long two chord, a really long five chord, a really long one chord, 
and the functional aspect where it's moving from one to the other is completely gone because the harmonic rhythm is really slow. And of course, essentially, that's the same thing that's happening here with Witch Hunt, where it's a 12-bar blues, but it's played really slow and then in a double-time feel, so that you don't really hear how the chords are moving. That means that if you have just an island of sound for each of the chord, which is, of course, just the basic definition of a modal piece, you can do all sorts of things with it. And in this example, Herbie Hancock is really starting to use sort of a tonic minor sound or a melodic minor sound on the C minor first. And then moving into a G7 altered line that is essentially just coming out of a two octave B major 7 sharp 5 arpeggio. So this arpeggio and then making a line with that and sort of just throwing it in on top of the C minor. Now you can interpret this in two ways because at that point in the in the bar, they kind of do sometimes have a G7 altered, and I think Roncada is playing a D flat also under it. But at the same time, he's then then Herbie Hancock is playing across the bar line, or he is just really thinking C minor and adding the G7 altered line on top of it. That's a little bit open to how you want to see it if it's Roncada reacting to Herbie Hancock or Herbie Hancock playing across the bar line. In the beginning of the second chorus, then all hell breaks loose or we're moving into outer space because he starts really back home with some stuff that's based on C minor, similar to the approach that I was talking about in the George Benson video. So the line is really coming out of a C minor triad, a descending C minor triad, so G, E flat and C, and then with some leading notes. From here we get a scale run and then a B diminished. Try it. And now we get into the part of the solo where he starts shifting things around and he's really using uh, intervals and interval structures and then just shifting those around in sort of a systematic way, but really completely unrelated to, uh, to C minor. This is pretty much chromatic or atonal, whatever you want to call it, quite similar to what you hear in the John McLaughlin videos, but at the same time, a lot less chaotic. He's a little bit more systematic about it. So the first part is really just this, which is an, of course an, an E flat and a, and a B, and then we get the same idea played backwards a half step lower. Then we get a few fourth intervals, and then turning the last one around, but still it's just this movement. From here it moves into now some, um, some quarter arpeggios, so we get not only the interval first, just a quarter interval, then a quarter arpeggio moving the quarter arpeggio again, then back to just the interval, and then moving fourth intervals chromatically, ending on the D. The reason that I can keep on making videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page, and if you join us over there, I can also give you something in return for your support. This example is a little bit different, because here we have Herbie Hancock playing some more basic jazz phrases in medium swing. I think until now, the other examples are really focused on more the modern sounding, all the shifting harmony and all the the angular and triplet phrases. But of course, Herbie Hancock is a master jazz musician and he can also really play medium swing and play great medium swing phrases. In fact, I think maybe medium swing is really the tempo where you separate the men from the boys when it comes to jazz. What do you think? Leave a comment. Here he's again using melodic minor on the C minor chord. And essentially this phrase is just an E flat major seven sharp five arpeggio. So first we are get a pickup and then sliding up to the D and then just quickly down the arpeggio to the D, an octave lower. From there on, there's a short break, and then he moves into a phrase that's again triplets, but now it's triplets in groups of four, and essentially this is just diatonic triads in the C melodic minor scale. So first a G major triad, and then here we don't really get the pattern, but the pattern actually becomes clear in, in the next triad, which is of course an A diminished triad. 
and then the same idea from B diminished and then C minor and then just running down ending on the D, the ninth of the chord. Another very important figure in the development of modal jazz is Joe Henderson. If you want to check out how he improvises on a simple standard like Take the A Train, then check out this video where I'm analyzing some phrases from his solo on that song. <laughs> 